Good morning, everybody. Welcome uh, to the Be Changemaker Africa 2021 to our final pitch event today. My name is Martina Hamingerova, and I am a, a manager of acceleration programs at Founderscope. And this year, I'm honored to be a project manager of Be Changemaker Africa. Be Changemaker and Be Changemaker Africa edition are an annual social entrepreneurship training program by WorkSkills, uh, HP Foundation, African Union, uh, and UNIDO. This program is, uh, is empowering young people to develop their skills uh, to, in order to turn them into viable and successful businesses uh, with positive social impact to the world. So thank you very much uh, to everyone for joining today and supporting our top six teams who reached the final. They were selected from more than 500 applications from 40 African countries. So it's a really great success for them today to be here. And um, yes, today with, our, with us are also our judges. Let me check if everybody is here. So can you hear us, Brett? Matthias. I can, loud and clear. Yeah, thank you, Martina. Uh, Matthias. I can, yes. Helena. And Volker. So, I can hear you. So welcome. And uh, I would like to invite you to briefly introduce yourself I would like to start uh, with Brad. Good morning, everybody. Really excited to be part of the initiative. My name is Brad Pulford, and I'm the VP and Managing Director of HP Africa. Thank you very much, Brad. Um, Matthias? Yes, good morning, everyone. Matthias here. My, uh, I am an industrial development expert at UNIDO. Uh, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, and I work primarily with entrepreneurship and skills development related issues. So it's a great honor to be part of this uh, wonderful competition and to be able to follow a little bit the, the different teams and the very exciting ideas. And I look forward to uh, this final pitch. Thank you very much, Matthias. I hope we can connect now with Helena. I'm connecting with her now, so maybe we'll just move on and then I'll-, I'll Okay, control. then we will uh, move on to Volker. Good morning, Volker. Good morning, Martina. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Volker, Volker Lichtenthaler. I work for GIZ. We implement development cooperation projects on behalf of the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development of the Government of Germany in our partner countries, mainly actually in the African region. Um, I'm a specialist in capacity development, specifically based on digital platforms, on a platform called Atingi. And we are active in almost all sectors, amongst them, of course, also private sector development. So we have been supporting startups on the African continent for some years, and I'm therefore really looking forward to these interesting projects that we will get to know better in a minute. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Volker. And we will get back to Helena as soon as she's here. And um, now I would like to, I'm very excited to, in, uh, to introduce you to, to our top six teams who reached the final from 30 amazing teams we had at the beginning of the program starting this year in August. And all teams were supported uh, through the mentors, coaches, and judges who were guiding them through the program. And today we have our top six from sector of health, uh, education, legal serv services, finance, and employment. They are representing five African countries, South Africa, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Uganda, and Nigeria. So let me shortly share my screen. Uh, 
and introduce you to our top six team. So first we have Africity. Africity is a female management team consisting of two young women team members, Aija and Mandisa from South Africa. They have seen a lot of great African ventures and startups fail in cities across the continent and figured out that there is a gap between what innovators create and what real people need. And this is what uh, Africity wants also to tackle. They involve young uh, unemployed people as data science for service to provide market insights to ventures. So hello, Aija and Mandisa. Oh, sorry. Uh, secondly, Cronmate. Uh, chronic diseases are a burning issue in Africa. Many patients don't have enough information uh, and access to doctors or relevant communities. This is the topic which Cronmate uh, wants to tackle. Represented today by Ezeosa and Blessing, team Cronmate from Nigeria. They are developing a web application that helps chronic people to solve the problems through the information, access to information, online consultations, and support groups. Next, we have Payland. Payland is a group of innovative uh, people who are represented today by Eliterius and Lynn, members of the Payland uh, Africa team from Kenya. They will present today their microcredit solution used by uh, SMEs and schools to record small credits given to their customers, shoppers, and also school children parents. Next team, Profred from Zimbabwe. Uh, we have today here with us Prosper and Alfred. Prosper has a legal background and his teammate Alfred uh, is a, a self-taught coder whose passion is technology and coding. Uh, and they both noticed how risky the legal practice for some small business owners is. And they began to send more around what technology can do uh, to help uh, and improve the legal industry. They are now developing an AI powered and data driven platform enabling to SMEs to draft and manage their contracts. Next, we have Shayla and Sherry, uh, two young motivated teammates uh, from the team Rosa Educare Network from Uganda. They are focusing on the topic of low digital uh, literacy in Africa and in Uganda in particular. And they are developing an educational app with digital skills trainings programs developed by teachers and want uh, also to set up learning centers for children and young people from vulnerable communities who has a limited access to learning resources. And uh, also targeting the topic uh, of education, we have the team Ambani from South Africa, represented today by Isabella and Mukundi, who will introduce us to their developed platform for teaching African languages. The educational platform provides schools, uh, teachers, and parents with educational content, especially language oriented, and enables them to teach children uh, African languages through storytelling and gaming. So these are our great and inspiring teams who reach the final and who are going to make a positive impact to their communities and to the world. So welcome our teams. And we are now almost ready to start. But before we start, there's also something the audience can do to support their favorite team. And as you can see on the website, you can go to vote.bechangemaker.com. I also put the uh, <clears throat> link to the chat. And uh, each person can register once if it, uh, it's uh, with his email address and evaluate the team according to the criteria you can see on your screen. So re relevance and innovation, scalability and impact, pitching and presentation. 
Please uh, make sure that you uh, evaluate the teams during their pitches, since we will have only 30 seconds, uh, yes, 30 seconds at the end of the, uh, of the voting, and then we close the voting. So please um, evaluate and score the teams as they are pitching. The pitches of uh, this discourse of the audience will be counted as the bonus points of the total scores by the judges. Yes, so there, these are our reminders for the audience. I will put now the um, to the chat the link so you can then evaluate your teams. So last reminders for teams, as you know, each team has five minutes uh, to present. If you go over the time, we have to stop you. And then you have uh, five minutes for Q and A's with judges. So before we start, any questions? If not, I hope you are all ready. Teams, you are ready and we are starting with our team Africity. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Imagine a world where truly pan-African ventures go on to scale across multiple African cities. Sorry, I'm just struggling. In 2019, 250 ventures in Africa received funding. This is VC and scaling funding, and it is projected that only 10% will scale successfully. This is due to an inability to find product adoption, inability to scale effectively, or poor management team. You may be wondering why this matters. It matters because these ventures are positioned to solve social issues like access to education, healthcare, and financial inclusion. Our data and insight solution through survey responses from your target market test product adoption in dynamic Af African cities, easing your entry into these cities. In 2050, it is projected that Africa will be home to two thirds of the youngest population in the world. This is why we see unemployed youth as strategic partners and agents on the ground. We have created an agent app that can be used on a feature phone or a smartphone. This allows the unemployed youth to be able to onboard themselves on this app and under tasks to find surveys available in their city. And for each survey that they get a response for, they earn $1.5. This allows them to be empowered to drive their income earning per month. We look at our data from three perspectives. Number one is on the ground agents answering specific questions that our client needs insights on in a specific African city. Then our team of researchers looks at macro as well as industry specific elements in that city. And finally, we validate our insights and recommendations with a panel of experts. We have identified partnerships as strategic through incubators as well as venture capitalists who have a portfolio of ventures that they work with as ways to enter new markets. Our use cases are product validation, entering to new markets, strategic partnerships in African cities to scale, as well as testing innovations. Investments in African startups from 2015 to 2019 increased by 400 million. We intend to focus on two of the top four VC markets in Africa initially, which is Kenya and South Africa. And if we capture 10% of this market, this is a market valued at 559 million US dollars. In, in order for scalability to be efficient, we, we apply an outsourced human capital model in which we partner with agents who are unemployed youth and we partner with universities with final year and postgrads in order to help us with the desktop research. We have a social media presence with a podcast that we're launching in the beginning of next year called the Afri City Podcast, where we have conversations with innovators in different African cities. We've created reports on healthcare and education and the impact of COVID in South Africa and Kenya, which are available on our website. And we've also created our agent app, which is ready to be shared. 
In terms of our journey, we, we plan on having a pilot in the beginning of next year, which will be pro bono with an ed tech company, either in Kenya or Nigeria, that's looking at coming into the South African market. We will use this as a case study in order to sell our services to future clients. We also intend on looking at fintech and agri-tech agri as the next two sectors that we'll do reports on. In terms of growth, we need 200 clients in order to reach a revenue of 100 million per year with a margin on that revenue of about 45%. We've also identified the personnel that would require in order to service 200 clients effectively. We see our competitors as inspiration on ways to modify our offering going forward and ensure that we are competitive. We believe that these four factors distinguish us from our competitors, which is partnering with unemployed youth, triangulation of data, our niche focus on ventures where most data and insights firms are geared towards multinationals, and our pricing sits on the medium to lower end of the spectrum. We've created three packages, namely the reluctant, curious, the ready, and the customized. The rationale behind this is being able to engage clients across the client lifecycle. Our clients receive surveys, leads where applicable, as well as reports that pull together the surveys, the desktop research, and the expert opinion in entering a new African city. We believe that we support the sustainable development goals through promoting entrepreneurship, creating livelihoods for unemployed youth, and contributing to sustainable African cities. Our team consists of a research and strategy lead, a technology and innovation lead, as well as a market research and marketing analyst. We invite you to partner with us in reimagining a resilient Africa, where we bridge the gap between innovations, innovators, and real needs of African citizens on the ground. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Aja, for your presentation. And now it's time for judges, and I would like to start with uh, Brad. Brad, do you have any questions or comments to our team? Um, no questions at this point in time. I think I'm very clear in terms of the, you know, the opportunity that lies ahead as well as the business case. Um, certainly one of the challenges we have is understanding the opportunities that we have across the continent as well as addressing some of that unemployment in a way that allows digital to become part of that process. And I think there's a very clear intent uh, in this particular case. I really enjoyed the presentation. Um, very clear my side. Well done to the team. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brett. And now Matthias. Yes, thank you also from my side for the very, very nice presentation. It, it uh, gives a very good and clear uh, message across. I think my question would be more in terms of, because a lot of the product, I guess, uh, is based on the surveys that you're conducting. So what do you do to ensure data quality of the, of the responses that, that it's based on? So, so the one thing that we're trying to do is incorporating a voice recording element in the app. So for 60% of your survey responses as an unemployed youth, you need to have recorded the audio. So that creates almost that trust relationship. So we're looking at that as well as geolocation. So those two features aren't yet in the MVP, but those are features that we're looking at building in to the app. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. And I would like to, uh, to turn to Volker now. Yes, thank you. Me too. I, I do think that was a wonderful, really great um, presentation, very clear. Uh, one question maybe um, to you, Ira. Uh, why do you think, um, why is now a good time to start this business? I think now more than ever, we're seeing that there's a need for partnership between private enterprises and public set sector in meeting the needs of citizens across the African continent. And I still think that we're aware of a very big deficit in understanding the nuances of different African countries. And so given that gap and given the urgency for certain services that should be provided by states like health and education, we think that there's a great appetite to understand how those can be catered to in an effective way, and in a way that's in partnership with the actual people that you're aiming to, to target as clients. I see, thank you very much. Thank you very no much, problem. team, for the presentation. Thank you very much, judges.
And we move Thank to you. the next team, Thailand. Let me just share my screen. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Um, hello, hi. I am Cherok Lin, the project manager Payland. With this presentation, I'm going to demonstrate how we as Payland aim to eradicate poverty and also provide quality education. Additionally, I'm going to showcase how BCMA has helped us grow as a team and as a business. As Payland, we are digitizing the black book used by micro, small and medium-sized enterprises to journal small credits that they extend to their customers. Additionally, we have incorporated tools to help these retailers to manage their businesses with ease. I'm going to give you a background of the product. So growing up, we had John's shop. John's shop used to serve the community at large. So my mom would send me to John to get bread and milk, and she'd do this without giving me any cash. So I'd go to John, make a request of the goods, then John would record this on a piece of paper normally known as the black book. Weeks later, my mom would go to John and pay back. So going back to the village, John's shop is still the same. And by this, I mean no growth and same invent inventory. This is due to the lack of transactional data that John does on a daily basis. Lack of this data makes it hard for John to actually understand the value of the business and also access funds. So as Payland, we are digitizing both credit and cash transactions that occurs at John's shop on a daily basis. With this data, John can actually understand the value of the business and also make it easy for him to access funds through Payland. With this product, we seek to serve a population of 1.3 billion people living in Africa, which is estimated to grow to 1.8 billion by the year 2028. These people are served by over 100 million MSMEs distributed across Africa. With this same, same product, we seek to venture into developing countries to help eradicate poverty and also provide quality education. How the product works is both my mom and John would have to be signed up on Payland. So my mom would go to John, make a request. John would accept the request and the transaction is recorded as a success. With this transaction data, we are actually able to understand the credit worth of jo both John and my mom. And with this understanding, we are able to extend credit to both. So we not only prepay for goods and services, we also prepay for parents, school fees, for their students learning in different learning institutions. As of now, the product is accessible via mobile app, USSD, and also web portal. So how we plan to make money as a business? For one, we have two to 10% interest issued on loans. We also have a 10% late repayment fee, and additionally, we have 1.5 to 3% commission on every transaction that occurs through Payland. One would ask, why would John or my mom choose to use Payland? For one, we are offering access to funds to both the shopper and the shopkeeper. Secondly, we have low interest compared to our competitors. And thirdly, we have an AI system that is used to score both the shoppers and the shopkeepers based on data. And finally, we have a fund locking utility. With this, we are actually sure that funds accessed were actually used for the intended purpose. We conducted market research to, to validate both the market and the product. And some of the questions that we asked were, you as a shopper, do you offer goods and credit? We got an 89% positive feedback. We also asked them if they are willing to digitize their businesses and access and offer goods on credit through Payland, we got 100% positive feedback. We also went ahead to inquire from the customers if our interests were favorable and they were actually willing to pay for the services, and we got 100% positive feedback. Up to date, we have over 10,000 shoppers using Payland to access goods on credit, who has served by over 2,500 shops on Payland. 
some of the strategic partnerships that we have formed as a business. We have Adenian Labs, which is going to help us venture into new markets. We have TVETS, which is a vocational training institution. We have Fingo, and we also have Turaco, an insurance firm. Currently, recently, we are able to raise a seed round of $2 million. And thanks to the BCMA, we refined the skills of the team and also developed a business plan for the year 2022. This is going to help us drive product and market growth. We are looking forward to grow the team and those partnerships and also grow our customer base. So we as the Payland team ask you to join us on our quest to build local economies. Stay in touch. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Lynn, for your presentation. And now I would like to turn to judges and uh, ask Brett if he has any questions. No, once again, I think a very, very good presentation and, and certainly something that resonates amongst many of our communities as we try and solve some of these problems. And you know, really good to see again, digital become front and center of how we're trying to solve and serve some of these communities. One of the questions I would, I guess I would have is, how do we deal with some of the inflationary issues we have around currencies in certain markets? Um, is this something that's been taken under consideration? And the second question would be around infrastructure. How do you guarantee the uptime of infrastructure based on, you know, some of the communities, uh, you know, being driven by some of that digital inequity we talk about? So. Hi, first of all, Hi. my name Hello. is Eliterius Juma. I'm also part of the Payland team. And I'll just address um, one of the questions that you've asked about the infrastructure. Um, we've put this into consideration and we believe that uh, smartphone penetration in Africa currently sits at 500 million users, of which most of them use feature phones. And for this, we have a USSD put in place where our users can as well enjoy the same services, but using a feature phone. So ideally, we have, um, we have accommodated all, all, all the population um, in Africa, regardless if they have a smartphone or if they have a feature phone. Then um, just if you can repeat the first question. The first question was really based on inflation you know, based on the currency volatility that we see in various communities and markets, do you guarantee some of the interest rates that you provide to your customers? Or how do you deal with some of that volatility that we see in those communities, particularly around currency that we see at the moment? Uh, so currently what I'd say in regard to the inflation and currency volatility is that we are first of all, predominantly in Kenya, but as we move, uh, into the different markets in Africa, we are going to, to see a model where we abstract our product. So if it's operational in South Africa, then all the operations are strictly or they are um, based in South Africa. That is, they are localized for the South African market. If we move to Nigeria, then we localize the product for the Nigerian market. So we won't have that change of currency within the platform itself. Great, very good, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Matthias, do you have any questions? Yes, thank you very much for the very, very nice presentation. Uh, again, very, very clear. Uh, I think my question would be related to data security. How do you ensure that uh, information that's shared with you is not, uh, I guess, compromised or leaked to, to any outside or external uh, persons? So um, we take, first of all, we take user data security very seriously. And um, with that, uh, through the Adenian Labs, we have been able to partner with um, AWS, who currently, are, where currently we, 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 we have, like we have taken all the, all the security measures that they have put in place. And as well, um, from an organization, point of view, we have also put some very strict measures in terms of who has access to this data. We do uh, scrutiny some background checks with regards to our developers, those people who have access to this data. And um, 
doing small, small, uh, putting up small, small uh, measures in place just to ensure that the data is secure in terms of who access the data and the infrastructure that we use to handle the data itself. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And Volker, do you have anything to, to add? Um, thanks again um, for this presentation, also very clear. I was just wondering, you already managed to find many customers, and I think if I recall it correctly, 2,500 shops already partnering. Um, how did you do that? What's your marketing approach? Um, so our approach, uh, number one, we have some representative on the ground. So for instance, we have fragmented Nairobi into five different fragments where each fragment has one representative whose job is to sensitize the community on the presence of payland and also the advantages of payland if they incorporate it into their businesses. Then number two, we also have a referral program where whenever these, uh, these shops refer the, the other shops within their community or within their circles, we are able to share some revenue with them. So this also encourages the shops to onboard customers and as well onboard their friends within the platform. I see, thank you. Wonderful, thank you very much team. Thank you very much judges. And we are moving to the next team. And this is Cronmate from Nigeria. Yes, good morning, good morning everyone. Okay, so I just want to share my screen. Can you see it now? Yes, so we can see it. Hello? Yes, we can hear you also. Okay. Hello, Africa. This is Cronmate, and our one mission is to save lives by simplifying chronic disease prevention and care in the continent. Now, as a team of healthcare professionals, when we think of impact, we think, how can we pull in the needed healthcare resources and support to persons who need them the most? Which brings us to the problem of chronic disease. Medically, these are health conditions which individuals and families have to live with for a lifetime or for years. These are sitting deep into our world today, leading families to financial difficulties, poverty, disability, and ultimately loss of lives. Unlike the past, chronic disease has become the new normal in Africa due to urbanization, claiming the lives of the young, old, rich, and poor. You most likely know of a struggling young man like Steve in his early 30s, caring for two parents with multiple conditions, including diabetes and hypertension. Steve has a family of his own, but is stressed with managing his parents' care while being at risk of developing the same conditions. Still, we most likely suffer financial and mental stress alongside the frustrating hospital queues with little or no follow-up care. Sadly, Steve's story is similar to one in three homes in Nigeria today. As an organization driven to save lives, we thought, how do we empower people in such situations, assess professional care and support needed to improve their lives and avoid preventable deaths? And so we designed an all-in-one mobile application that basically mimics a virtual primary care center. Through just one platform, we offer medical consultations with continuous follow-up care and in-person visits, strong support groups, as well as several um, healthcare essentials and a means to monitor their health records. The application also leads users to ongoing humanitarian projects and become chronic disease advocates. We are not just another telehealth cliche. We are the first in Nigeria with a unique focus on chronic disease. We offer users of a safe place, 24 hours user support, as well as a strong support community. We operate a business model that provides revenue from subscriptions, product sales, and donations, which are then channeled into the operational costs and unpaid features such as outreaches and support groups. Users can assess continuous care for up to six months with little as $10 to $40, which also assures them of in-person visits. We also offer full warranty and usage support for all our supplies. With these and more revenue streams, we project a yearly revenue of a million dollars and intend to break even within four months after launch. 
Since inception, we have operated mainly on the field in Nigeria through free outreaches, advocacy campaigns, and trainings, which has impacted over 2,000 people who eventually got screened, gained consultations, medications, or empowered with knowledge. We have also built strong partnerships with notable NGOs, pharmaceutical companies, governments, and clinics, which has given us more exposure and validation. Currently, over 270 potential app users are already signed up to the APK version of the app, and they will serve as beta users when we launch, so we encourage you to sign up now. We evaluated the market in Nigeria and discovered 58 million persons with risk of developing chronic disease. We also researched into the digital health market and discovered an exponential rise leading up to billions of dollars. On our development timeline, we currently have a functional landing page for signups and an APK demo of the app. We are currently gathering the medical team and connecting to suppliers and partners with the goal of relaunching in January next year. This is the status of development. Change Maker Africa for premium tools and supports needed for growth. We need you to be part of our impact story. We are seeking funding to ensure the best technical development for our products and partnerships to expand our impact and build global relevance. Just like Steve, millions of people are on the line. Together, we can reduce their health sufferings and enable them to live longer, healthier, and happier. This is Chronit, and once again, we are simplifying chronic disease prevention and care in Africa. Thank you so much, and we encourage you to sign up now. Thank you, Chronmate. Thank you, Ezeza, for the great presentation and great dem demonstration of the product. Uh, I would like to now start again with Brett for questions and comments. Thank you. No, I mean, again, a very good presentation, flawlessly delivered and, you know, certainly very relevant when you consider some of the health, you know, circumstances that we have in many communities across Africa. So incredibly important that we, we solve some of these issues. And I think this is a great step in the right direction and certainly very innovative. Um, no questions from my side. I think I'm pretty clear around the business case. Um, and so um, I'm good my side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brett. And uh, Matthias, do you have any questions? Yes, first of all, thank you for a very, very nice presentation. Once again, a really nice presentation. Um, I think my only question would be related to, uh, I mean, you're building your product on kind of sensitive health data. So how do you go about, or have you gone about uh, handling that uh, issue when you are marketing your, your product? How do you approach customers when they have questions regarding the, the use of the data? The use of their data? Yes. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, as a first step, we are organizing community fora and discussions to engage the community about the entire product, while also working with some with doctors and other healthcare professionals who we serve as major marketing channels to the patient. So when we approach them, we inform them, first of all, about the general idea and how important it is. And actually, many of them have validated this. So in short, we um, educate them that their data is secured, is in a secure platform, which is SSL equipped, meaning persons don't have access to the app. And also, there's an auto login logout feature which disables persons from logging in after two attempts and within a specified amount of um, time. So we, we inform them of all of these features and tell them that we're also working on getting our own server to ensure you know, that the information and data is more secure. So all of this we um, engage during our um, 
community fora and engagement with the medical team. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Polka, is there something you would like to add? Um, thank you, Martina. Um, after three presentations, I already find it very difficult to say which one is the best because we were all very good um, so far. Um, thank you for that. Um, I was just wondering, I mean, again, uh, your product is um, based on IT systems and the app plays a, a crucial role in your approach. So I was, so that's why user-centered um, approaches are very important for you, I think. Um, could you describe a typical customer to me? How would she or he looks like and why would they turn to coordinate? Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, I'll start by imagining a scenario where a patient with diabetes and hypertension comes into a clinic regularly and in interacts with the doctor. So we are, um, through the doctor, we're going to encourage the doctor to inform the patient about the benefits of the app. And so what we're going to tell her is that through this app, she has access to medical consultations for an extended period of time for one, three, and up to six months. And instead of her coming to the clinic, um, waiting um, for the long hospital queues and the whole uh, mental burnout, she can have that ease of use of having medical consultation for an extended period of time. She needs that because she needs to be going to the hospital regularly. And sometimes she might have emergency situations, maybe um, a diabetic complication. So we'll inform her of the need to always um, to engage us on the app and engage the medical team so that she can have the best routine checkup, routine advice on how to manage her health properly. And she might also need medical supplies as well, such as um, testing kits and other special diets that she may need. So those are also available on the app and ease her stretch because we're going to deliver it. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> We're going to deliver it right to her. And she can also access um, health records portal where she can you know, record her blood sugar readings for one week, two weeks, and be able to monitor her health as well. And of course, we're also giving her a future where she can save in wallet because this is a chronic condition which she will need to save for and make budget for. So in the app, it has an option for her to save finances in order to procure goods, make appointments and whatsoever. So these are what we will be proposing to her as a chronic disease patient. Thank you. Very well. Thank you. Thank you, team. Thank you, judges. And now let's welcome the team, Profred from Zimbabwe. Thank you. Good day. Thank you, Martina. Uh, this is Prosper from Profred. I'll start sharing my screen now. All right, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, thank you. Uh, contracts are the foundational layer of commerce for your entire business. They govern every business transaction and relationship. It can be when you are hiring your first employee or when you are raising funds to scale up your business or when you are um, concluding a sale. It is therefore not surprising that SMEs and startups lose over 17 million US dollars in legal issues, whereby those legal issues are actually contract related. This is an indication that in as much as contracts are this important for business, SMEs and startups continue to be underserved by the legal industry when it comes to these services. This is mainly because the traditional methods of contracting are actually slow. For instance, in South Africa, it can cost you between 3,500 rands to 15,000 rands just to draft a single contract. Also, these methods are slow, which makes them incompatible with the modern day type of businesses that rely on speed to keep a competitive advantage over readily established businesses in the market. This is why Profred is building an AI powered and data driven contract drafting, reviewing, and management platform. On this platform, users will be able to draft their contracts in five minutes time using our interactive uh, simple Q&I template. 
They can also review their own contracts using our system that flags problematic clauses and provides suggested alterations. Uh, the system also simplifies legalese and explains complex clauses in simple everyday language. A further added advantage is that they can also negotiate, collaborate, and conclude contracts in real time all on the same platform. They can also track compliance and avoid lawsuits that are contract related. This is the perfect, our, our, our product is unique in that it leverages AI to generate interactive templates. It is also made with the African startup and SMEs landscape in mind. Therefore, it is simple to use and one will not need to have any legal background to be able to use the product. This is the perfect solution in the now considering that uh, the government backed SME growth and startup boom in Africa would mean that more SMEs and startups continue to be underserved by the legal industry. But the development in AI and machine learning technology and the availability of data in the legal sector makes this the perfect solution for the contracting issues that face startups and SMEs in Africa. In case you're wondering why this uh, should interest you, you should note that this is a $17 billion uh, market with an annual growth rate of 6%. And when in South Africa, we already have a serviceable market of 2.25 million SMEs. And when we speak of expansion into the rest of Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa alone, we have over 44 million SMEs. We have interacted with our prospective users and are currently engaged with over 200 SMEs and startups on social media. And we have so far in the period of two months managed to sign up 15 SMEs for beta testing as soon as our product is ready. Our go-to-market strategy combines strategic partnerships, organic growth, and digital marketing. And as far as strategic partnerships are concerned, we're partnering with acceleration hubs. For instance, in BCM alone, we've already had three startups approaching us with an interest in trying out our service. Also, our platform fosters organic growth in that it allows users to invite other parties to either sign or to view the contract on the platform, therefore fostering organic growth. Our business model is a SaaS model that combines annual and monthly subscriptions, giving our users the flexibility that they need, which our current competitors are not providing in the market. We've projected to reach uh, over 1 million uh, US dollars revenue in, in 2023. And considering that where we needed nine concept supporters, we've already have 15 signups for beta testing. This means that we can actually reach our goal uh, earlier than projected. And as far as competition is concerned, we have a very strong competitive advantage in that where our direct competitors are building a contract management platform for legal departments and in-house counsel, our system is made simple to use and one will not need to have any legal background to be able to use it. This is feasible considering that in Africa, startups and SMEs can go for over five years without any legal department or in-house counsel to speak of. And as far as our development is concerned, we are on track to have our MVP out in December as we are currently uh, building and testing our AI software using data uh, compiled by a dozen legal aspects with over 18,000 annotations. This brings us to an accuracy rate of 84%. We are a team committed to solving contracting problems for African startups and SMEs by leveraging uh, cutting edge technology. And we implore you to join us on this journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, perfectly on time. And uh, I would like to turn to judges now and start again with Brett. Thank you. No, I mean, again, a very relevant kind of solution and something that is uh, certainly well needed. When we consider how important entrepreneurship is across the continent, the need for, you know, having this kind of service around legal contracts um, and reducing some of the complexity and cost involved in the process is significant. So business case, uh, very good, um, you know, and certainly very relevant. One question I would have is, as you engage the process from a contractual point of view and you leverage you know, the app in order to get your, your new business started from a legal standpoint anyway, 
if there are any issues with regards to the contractual obligations or any of the content that he set out, um, how would you overcome these? You know, is there a call center? Who does somebody call to try and engage any of that complexity if you have any questions? And again, I think one of the questions that has come up uh, on a couple of occasions is around data security and protection. Um, what do you have in place from that perspective? Okay, uh, thank you so much for that question. So when it comes to uh, the problems that uh, the users may face, we have a perfect onboarding system whereby we uh, intend to have on online presence uh, whereby one is going to be guided by an expert in the onboarding part of uh, the use when they are starting to use the um, platform for the first time. We have uh, a call center set up so that they can be perfectly onboarded. And when it comes to further problems with uh, a contract which are not covered by our system. We also have, a, as part of our business model, partnership with uh, law firms, whereby if your problem needs uh, further steps such as litigation, you will be able to be connected to the relevant, to relevant rather law firms or legal practitioners that will take that further. And as far as data protection is concerned, our, our system is built to be compliant with uh, relevant data and private policy. And uh, it's built on the AWS, which provides an end-to-end -end encryption and other security measures for the protection of data. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Thank you very much, Matthias. Yes, thank, thank you once again for a great presentation. And in this case, I think a, an incredibly relevant and, and exciting uh, business idea. Um, I think my, my only question would be, uh, the slide that you're sharing here, here as well would be regarding your competitors. Is it so that you have competitors who are also using uh, AI to develop um, contract drafts the same way you are doing or, or is that uh, not the case? Okay, thank you, Matthias. So our competitors can be grouped into direct and indirect. Uh, in, indirect being those who are still using the traditional methods of contracting, that is uh, your lawyers and your consultants. And then we also have, in a way, direct competitors, uh, such as the, those who provide online non-customizable templates which you just download and then maybe you add information there. The problem with those ones is that uh, the information there is too fixed and you, you may still need to approach a lawyer to help you complete the template. And, and as far as more direct competitors who are using AI, uh, I can speak of uh, every sort, which are mainly for now, they're based in Europe or in the United States. And their approach is that they are building systems or platforms with uh, the legal department of uh, a business or an in-house counsel in mind. So they, they're targeting businesses that already have legal department and uh, in-house counsel. But this is not uh, true for most startups and SMEs in Africa because they can go for over five years without any legal department to speak of. So in as much as they are using AI, their focus is on uh, when you're using their system, you will still need to have some form of legal background. They're building for legal departments and in-house counsel. Whereas for us, we're making the system as simple as possible so that even a person without any legal background will be able to, to use the system. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. The time for q and is uh, over. So we are moving to the next team and this is Rosa Educare Network from Uganda. All right. Sheila and Sherry.
Can can the screen can everyone see our screen? Yes. Yes, we can see. Hello everyone, my name is Sherry and my name is Sheila. We are from Team Rosa Healthcare Network, whose vision is to ensure that all learners, including the most disadvantaged, have access to digital learning resources. The use of technology in education is very important as it helps enhance the learning process and help prepare children for the digital future. However, in Africa, many children face barriers in accessing digital tools and learning technology. Only 34% have access to internet and only 11% have access to computers. With schools closed for over 40 weeks, over 54 million children across Africa lacked access to education. And this exposed them to social and environmental risk factors such as child labor, early marriages, and teenage pregnancies. Majority are less likely to report back to school. In order to facilitate digital learning, various initiatives have been implemented. However, they are costly, have limited coverage, and require internet to access the learning content. With technology rapidly advancing and transforming the education sector, our solution is an education application that will help enhance the work of teachers and expand the access to digital learning resources, as well as support all children to explore the benefits of digital learning. The education application will have a freemium pricing model, which gives learners access to free futures and premium futures that will cost only $10 per month with a substantial discount for those who subscribe throughout the whole year. Children will have access to interactive sessions with teachers, as well as regular lessons activities. Why we adopted this pricing is because majority of the children in Africa come from poor communities that are facing barriers in accessing quality education. Through the favorable pricing model, we shall be able to widen access to quality education that is cost effective, as well as work with schools that have limited scope for incorporating digital learning into their framework. In order to create value for our users, the content will be accessed offline to solve on the high internet costs. We shall also collaborate with community ICT centers that are geared to supporting children's education to provide them free access to the education application. The app will also translate the learning materials into other languages that children are conversant with. We conducted a set of interviews with some parents and schools, and out of the feedback we got, over 55% of parents are willing to subscribe for the premium learning content because of its affordability and added value benefits. And over 61% of schools are willing to incorporate it into their digital learning framework. In order for us to be able to serve a large number of children and ensure that no child is excluded from the benefits of digital learning, we shall collaborate with schools and community ICT, ICT centers that are supporting children from rural communities and those conflicted by, by, by challenges within their area to have access to digital learning resources. The market for digital education in Africa is growing at a compound annual growth rate of 36.5%. And this is because of the increasing government initiatives of incorporating digital learning into education as well as the increasing internet penetration. Therefore, for us to be able to achieve our minimum success criteria of 500,000 US dollars, our target is to have at least 5,000 active users. We are currently seeking funding to invest in our education application development, as well as create education content for the application. And then we shall work towards deployment and testing in community ICT centers. So this is... And this is the status of our product development. We had to put into consideration the ease of access as well as uh, as unattractive and simplified user interface to ensure that learners can easily navigate the education application. Our next steps are to integrate the user interface for the teachers.
joining the BCM Africa program has been an amazing platform for our organization. We have had access to tools and resources that we have used to improve on our strategies, as well as sharpen our focus to achieve our vision. We want to, 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 to thank our mentors and coach for all the support they provided to our team's project. And this is Thank the team, so very dedicated team behind our project. Thank you. Perfect, on time as well. Thank you very much, Sheila and Sherry, for your great presentation. And Thank you now, so again, time for judges. Uh, Brett? No, again, you know, just uh, so much good content, I guess, and, and certainly such a well needed initiative that, you know, that is going to drive access to learning, uh, which is so important given the digital inequity that we see across Africa. So a very important initiative. I think very, very quickly, two questions. The one is who decides on the content? So in other words, who helped develop some of the content? And the second question is more around the formality of the actual content once the course has been completed. Is this a recognized uh, you know, a bit of content that will be seen by the local government or not? Or is this something really just to spur on education, um, you know, for people to have access to learning? Yeah, thank you so much for that question. Um, while developing the content, we are going to work hand in hand with the teachers within the specific regions. Like for instance, if it is in Uganda, we shall work hand in hand with teachers so that they can create content that is in line with the Uganda primary level curriculum. And if we are scaling to other countries, we, sa we shall as well incorporate that into their own curriculum so that you can help children progress through their primary level education. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Matthias, do you have any, do you have feedback or any questions? Yes, thank you. Uh, once again, a great presentation. It's really nice to see the, the quality of the presentations because it makes a big difference. Uh, I think my question would be more related to uh, also what Brad was asking, how, how the content is uh, in line with uh, formal schooling. How, how is it uh, if you, if you uh, take part of these trainings or the, the, the school courses, how is that then accredited when, when, uh, when you complete them? Yes, like I, I mentioned earlier, we are going to collaborate with schools because at the moment, uh, if someone is attending a normal schooling, some of the children cannot be able to afford it. If they are to go for the, pub, for the public government funded initiatives, some of the schools have poor quality education. So we shall collaborate with schools and through our digital learning resources or access to community ICT centers that children will have, once a time, for instance, like here in Uganda, they have access to primary living education, we shall then add it up with the schools we are working with to enable the children to sit and progress to the next level. So that is already in the pipeline. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> I would like to turn now to Falka. Thank you, Martina, and thank you for this presentation. Very nice and interesting project. I was also wondering about the content, um, but um, uh, Matthias and, um, had already asked about this. I was just wondering, um, I mean, if you are partnering with teachers and with schools and with ICT centers um, in the country, um, that um, somehow prevents you from scanning up too much, isn't it? Uh, because a pure online or app application, um, you could uh, scale much further um, uh, than um, depending on, on uh, a blended learning approach, basically, with uh, partnering with the teachers. How, how do you think you could overcome this and, um, and come to a balance between the partnering and the blended learning approach and the upscaling of this app and the STEM content. Thank you so much for that question. Um, the, the bit of us collaborating with ICT community centers is majorly to support children that do not have access to digital learning resources. Mm -hmm. Because it makes no sense to create an education application, avail it on App Store or Google Play Store and there are no children who can access it. So the one of us collaborating with ICT centers is to enable us reach those who are marginalized. 
But the education application will also be available for learners to uh, download it from Google Play or App Store, and then they can have access to it. All right. So it's a top, this approach also. Thank you. Sorry, may I have one last question, which is really around the device itself? Yes, sure. Is, the, is this specific to mobile phones or will it be relatable to IT products like notebooks, laptops, et cetera? Exactly. exactly, yes. It will be able to be able to integrate it into computers as well as any other device so as to facilitate digital learning. Great, thank you. Thank you, thank you too. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you very much, judges. And we are moving on to our last team and our, uh, our wildcard team, Ambani from South Africa. Thank you. Um, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Ambani, can anyone answer this question for me? Probably not, if you don't understand Korean, but it's simply asking what one plus one is. And if you don't understand the language, it makes it a very difficult question. There are over 2,000 2, African languages, which is 30% of the world's spoken languages. The top seven languages on the continent alone have about 240 million speakers. In SA, only 8% of households speak English inside the home. Yet all single medium schools, 80% are English, followed by 18 16%, which are Afrikaans. The Department of Basic Education and some universities have tried to address this by introducing African languages um, courses. The problem is there's a lack of resources as the African languages are digitally underrepresented. A common problem for many marginalized languages across the world. Ambani Africa is an educate startup that makes early learning easier because it offers material for South African African foundation phase learners to learn African languages. Ambani is learner eccentric, using games for the user to practice in an accessible way while making it easier for parents and teachers to enable children to learn. The Mbani products include a gaming app in nine languages, augmented reality books, and a web platform for schools. The platform is aligned to the school curriculum, so it supports what is being taught at schools in foundation phase. The web platform allows for educators to track children's progress and see how well they're doing. This allowing to give guidance to children that need help. There are other educational services in the market. What differentiates Ambani is our focus on local languages, our gamified approach to learning, and how we combine all these services in an easily accessible platform. Our revenue model consists of our B2B model, which is school subscriptions to our web story platform. And we will eventually ration this into our B2C model for individuals as well. These include the online tutoring, AR books, and app subscriptions. We have three pricing options that range depending on the number of learners in the schools. We have chosen network schools that can offer us the amount of learners monthly. Our research on our pricing comes from what schools are currently paying for external programs that they use. Our go-to-market strategy focuses on creating a community of teachers and tutors as influencers. In this phase, we are targeting Gauteng and KZN ECDs, private schools with pre to foundation phase. Our initial target is 10% of those potential learners. We're currently piloting Ambani Learn at one of the curious schools in, in KZN. Our Ambani's projections are for 10,000 learners per year, our, mo our most being 2.9 million, which is $178,000 to 4.5 million, which is $265,000. Our team collectively has over 30 years of experience in entrepreneurship, education, tech, gaming, and content creation. This gives such a diversity to the app. 
In the past few months, we've increased the languages in the app to seven, sold 500 AR books, have 12,000 users on the app, and have recently won 1 million, million, 1 million rand in grant funding. This will allow us to increase our capacity, but we're still looking for an additional funding of 2.8 million. We're looking to raise 2.8 million, $172,000, which will be used to co further content create in, into more grades and subjects, expand our development team, increase our teachers, and focus, and focus uh, on additional languages. Ambani Africa helps schools to teach African languages in a fun and accessible way. This easy to use web platform uses stories and games for learning through play. Spelling, phonics, comprehension, sentence construction, and even speaking. Developed by teachers, the platform has a recording feature for teachers to check each student's speaking ability. We'd love to tell you more about how this can be utilized in your school. If you know all the languages of the world, but not your mother tongue, that is enslavement. Knowing your mother tongue and all other languages too is empowerment. Thank you, Galeboja. Thank you very much, Isabella. Also perfectly on time and turning to our judges, Brad. Yeah, again, I mean, such a, a good presentation and again, so relevant in terms of the needs of, you know, of South Africa and beyond. So from an African point of view, so very good. I really enjoyed the approach that it brings from a gamified point of view. So really getting, you know, children to really want to learn that access, I think is so important. And it transcends all languages, which we know across the continent is such a big challenge for all of us. Just one question from my side is, once the children get comfortable with the content and the way of learning from a language point of view, how do they translate that when they've got to be in a formal schooling environment and they have to be taught in a certain way? Will they be comfortable in terms of making that transformation back to whatever language it is that they will need to be learning in or writing a test in, etc.? cetera? Um, the, the, I, 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 the, so the app will allow the children um, to, to be able to learn the language so that also at the same time, because teachers are also going to be teaching them using the platform. So the, the aim is to, to integrate the, the platform into the school so that the teachers are the ones actually helping the kids use it. So okay. in, in, a, in a way they, they bouncing between, so, for instance, let's say my child uses it at school, she will be able to use it at home. And um, at the same time, the teacher in, in the back is monitoring what she's doing. So they, um, it, it, there's, there's no, in a way, can I say, a, a, a mix up of, 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 uh, of the, the, the languages. Um, yeah, moving across. I don't know, Mugundi, if you'd like to jump in on this one. So. Yeah, agreed. No so, so, so definitely um, because you're using it at school and at home, there's definitely an integration. Uh, one of the reasons why we went through the teachers is because there's such influences in the space um, and because they're the ones sort of tasked with teaching the language. So we're trying to um, make the platform holistic and, and balance this idea of being able to in learn independently at home, but also being able to link that with what you're already doing at school. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, Matthias. Yeah, thank you. Um, so from my side, I don't actually have any questions this time, but I, I of course feel that this is a super relevant uh, uh, solution that it's great to see that you also already having traction. So great to see, thank you. Thank you, Matthias. And last question, Volker, to the last team. Volker, can you hear us? I lost the classic. I forgot to unmute the mic. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, once again, great project initiative. Um, very useful and, um, and very clear also the presentation. I mean, um, what you're doing is um, um, 
very much based on good content of the games, illustrations, and so on. And it looks very nice what I've seen, um, but content development is very costly and very time consuming and needs a lot of resources. So um, how did you, how did you, and, and, and there's the, the need for a return on investment then, how did you um, handle this in your business planning? So with regards to content creation, we do most of our stuff in-house. So obviously we have teachers who are on board as well, and they help with the lesson plans and um, uh, the ideas as to what they're currently doing within the classrooms. And because we have um, people, uh, the, our team has such, a broad experience. And my, myself, I've got almost 10 years in terms of creating content and um, supervision of um, uh, production and shooting and, and the like. So um, creating content with in-house allows us to also cut down on a lot of costs. And also mm -hmm. some of the teachers self self do their, um, their own um, lessons, which we take and then we put graphics and animations and stuff. So everything is basically in-house. We, we don't really um, um, use a lot of um, external uh, resources other than the fact that we're using the, con the, 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 the material that the teachers are using in class. So that's, yeah, that's how we, we keep our costs in a way down with regards to creating content. Mm -hmm. Also, um, strategically for the business, it was a decision to say that this is IP that we're creating that then forms part of the, the, the assets of the business. Um, and it's also once we've created the animated content, it's something we can use across different languages. Um, so the initial cost is, is sort of heavier in the beginning, but it's something that then becomes repeatable and it's something that becomes a, a IP or an asset of the actual business. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The time for Quinez is up. Thank you very much, judges, for your feedback and questions to teams. And uh, of course, thank you very much, teams, for your amazing presentation. That was a lot of great, inspiring ideas and visions. And now I hope uh, everyone is ready for finalizing uh, this course. And we will have a short break two minutes and then we are back with the announcement of the winners. So please finalize now your scores and we will see us in two minutes. Thank you. So oh, we are now back and I think we all are now excited who are the winners of Be Changemaker Africa 2021. So let get, uh, let's get started and we will start with the sixth place, so with the uh, sixth place and yes, the number six, uh, uh, is the team Bayland. So thank you very much for your presentation and applause for you. Number five, we have the team 
Crown Maid. As there is our congratulations and thank you for your presentation today. Number four, Team Profred. So Alfred Prosper, of course, for you and your team. And now count, counting down to number three. So who is the number three? Shayla and Sherry, Rosa Educare Network. Congratulations on the third place. And now we are all excited who is the number two and one. And who is the winner of Be Change Maker Africa this year? So the second place, number two, is Ambani. Applause. Isabella Mutindi, congratulations to the second place. And the big winner, golden winner of the Be Change Maker Africa this year is Afri City. Congratulations, Aja and Mandiza, your team. Big applause for you. But, uh, congratulations to all team. You did a great work, you great job. You make a great progress with your projects and also with your pitches and presentations. And please continue to work on your ideas and visions to make a great impact to your community, communities and to the world. So big applause again for all teams. <laughs> so we make it like this. We are all very proud of you. And now I would like to give floor to Sofiane Kamar from HP Africa. Yes. So um, first of all, let me um, join me, please congratulating again Afro City for the excellent uh, work. All my best wishes for the other teams. So definitely I will not forget uh, the Afro City mentors, Raul, Sophie for the excellent mentorship. And um, thank you again for inspiring all of the audience and all of us today. So thank you and wish you all the best. You know, it's, it's not easy to go through all the closing remarks, but um, to be honest with you, the first thing that um, comes to my mind is, wow, what a wonderful journey uh, that all of us uh, went through during the last couple of months. And uh, as we look to the, all the teams, uh, honestly, we realize how much Africa, or should I say Mama Africa, is lucky with uh, this uh, fueling energy, a boundless creativity and uh, definitely the high uh, community engagement of uh, her new generation. So uh, um, along the ten, last 10 years, I, I was part of um, several projects uh, related to the uh, civil uh, rights, uh, youth entrepreneurship, women empowerment. But honestly, uh, this year, Be Change in Africa was an outstanding experience at all levels. Thank you again for giving, the, giving all of us the opportunity to, buy, to be far, part of it. So thank you again, uh, all the project team for, for, you know, from HP, HP Foundation, uh, World Skills, UNIDO, um, are, and uh, all of us are deeply grateful for all the plus 533 initial teams. Uh, plus 13 selected and uh, today six finalists, you know, for, um, uh, of course, all HP uh, mentors and uh, the honorable jury members for uh, um, giving us all as the opportunity to be part of such, such extraordinary and dynamic community, a community um, who uh, strongly believes in uh, the can-do mindset uh, creative, creativity, power, and definitely uh, the incredible potential of the African uh, continent. So um, I, I cannot, you know, um, finish the remarks without, you know, talk as an African, because first of all, I'm an African. Uh, and uh, let me honestly share with all of the audience that uh, definitely there will be, there, they, there's huge work to be done along the way in African continent, but uh, 
please trust that determination of the new African generation is uh, tremendously making the difference. So uh, as your Maria Makeba, and I know many of you know her, the legendary South African uh, singer and activist. So uh, she said that uh, Africa has her mysteries and uh, even a, a wise man cannot understand them, but a wise man respects them. So all our respect for all the teams for uh, making all of us walk through this extraordinary experience and uh, sing the truth, make, make your, your voice louder and uh, keep leading this uh, positive dynamic across the continent. So thank you again. All of us are, are really excited to be part of the next year edition. So and when you, I personally, I cannot wait for the next edition. So good luck for <laughs> all of also. you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, thank you again. again, thank you. I would like to give floor now also to the African Union to pardon. Thank you very much, uh, Martina. My name is Bardon Taris Maril. I'm with the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Team at the African Union Commission. And uh, first and foremost, actually, I would like to express my appreciation uh, to those who have pitched today, uh, to the jury, to the facilitators uh, uh, for your valuable, actually, uh, contribution uh, to the final of the B, B Changemaker uh, Africa. And also my deepest uh, gratitude to uh, those who have been following us online and those who have been with us from the very beginning of this journey, uh, but then who were not able to make it into now. But I would like to say again, congratulations. Um, so uh, first and foremost, actually, this, is, uh, this uh, session actually uh, speaks to our very own programs. We have various programs at the Africa Union Commission. And one of them is a young African program for innov on, on innovation and entrepreneurship, which actually uh, looks at creating an ecosystem uh, for young Africans, innovators and entrepreneurs, uh, those who are in the ideaing and uh, the co-creating uh, solutions, uh, especially solutions that shape the uh, local African markets uh, in terms of uh, solving and addressing social and economical uh, program, uh, problems. So again, um, without taking much of uh, your time, I wanna congratulate particularly uh, Afro City to make it uh, to, the, uh, uh, to be the winner here. But I want also all of you guys to know that um, you are all winners. You have made it uh, this far. And uh, so this has been also a huge learning opportunity for all of you. Uh, you have been uh, challenged. Um, uh, push to do uh, better and as uh, without forgetting you have been uh, mentored by very capable teams uh, so for the top ten, uh, top six teams that have just uh, pitched today I want to congratulate you again know that you are all you have all won um, and there is no loser here and uh, of course uh, I want to wish you good luck uh, for the remaining of your special and amazing uh, journey. Uh, over to you, um, uh, Martina. Thank you very much, Pardon. And uh, I would like to also ask our teams uh, for their mm. feedback now. Impressions you want to share with us? Do you want to share with us anything? Sheila? Sheila? So Sherry? Our team is extremely grateful for all the support. For believing. <laughs> okay, then we switched. Thank you very much. This is also feedback. And oh. Thank you very much. Uh, we switch to the next team, Payland. Okay. Eliterius Lynn. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. So I believe it has been a very interesting uh, journey for us as a team. Um, the experience is really priceless that we have garnered from the program itself. And I believe um, the fact that we have been through the program and 
Coincidentally, we have just we have just closed our seed round just the other day. The team is well equipped with more tools, more skills, and more knowledge on how we are going to move into 22, 2022 with much energy. And yeah, I'm really grateful for BCMA and being part of it. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Fred. Uh, thank you so much, Martina. Mm -hmm. Would like to express our deepest gratitude to my, my mic. So. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can yes, hear we you. Yes, we do. Would like to express our deepest gratitude to the organizers for bringing um, this and also for letting us to be part of this great platform. And uh, congratulations to Afri City and the other teams as well. It has been great having you guys on this journey and uh, your work is truly inspirational for the whole of Africa, actually. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prosper. And uh, as yourself, do you want to share something with us? Yes, sure. Um, okay, I would like to thank the entire PCM Africa for giving us the opportunity to showcase our work. It really means a lot to us. And also to my to my coach, um, Mr. Mikhail, for um, seeing us through even despite the challenges we had. And to you also, Ms. Martina, for being such um, a help during our, uh, the course of our journey. So we're really grateful. And to all the winners, congratulations. And we look really forward to seeing you at the top. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella. Isabella? I just want to say thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, I really, I, I believe that this uh, this program really has allowed for building blocks and also to to engage with other people doing amazing things. Um, so thank you so much to all the sponsors. Thank you, well done to all the the team that were part of this. And um, I'm so glad that Afri City <laughs> won. Um, you guys are amazing. And I can't wait to see you guys um, growing bigger and better. And to also all the other teams, I can't wait to hear more about you guys in the future. And um, I hope to meet you along the way, face to face, once the pandemic is over. And thank you so very much to Martina and the team as well. Thank you. That would be great. And last words, uh, Afri City, our winner. I just. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, firstly, to everyone else who is on the program with us, spending time with you guys and learning from you guys has been absolutely inspiring. And we can't wait to help you enter new markets in on the continent. So feel free to reach out to us when you're at that point. And to the program sponsors, thank you so much for this opportunity. The structure of the program really helped us move our idea a lot faster. Um, so the structure of some of the tasks that we had to do was really great. Access to incredible mentors like Felista from Afri Labs, incredibly inspirational, and Sophie from HP as well. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for instilling hope in, in a generation that really dreams of changing things and dreams of creating a more resilient continent. Thanks. Thank you very much. So at this point, the last big thank you to all mentors, judges, and uh, our coaches, our head coach, Michal, and our coaches, Kizara, Felista, Grace, Remy, Beryl, Kun and Kunle. So thank you very much again. And I hope we could maybe motivate and inspire some people out there to apply for the next edition of uh, Be Changemaker Africa 2022. And uh, have a great week and bye. <laughs> Thank you very much.